We're going to start out today by doing something that I rarely do here on the channel. 99% of the time, I will bring you guys factual information, sprinkle in a little bit of satire, and give you my opinion on whatever we're talking about. Sometimes I will throw in a little bit of speculation, but for the most part, I try to stay away from speculation as much as I can. Not today, though. The entirety of this video is going to be pure speculation. Now, it's educated speculation, but... It's still a guess on my part. ESPN is once again in the headlines this morning for all the wrong reasons. Last night on Monday Night Countdown, RG3 had a, had a little slip up, just a little slip up. He lit up what they like to call black Twitter with his comments defending Jalen Hurts. I just don't care about any of that. The ESPN headline that actually caught my attention this morning was the potential reunion of Mike and the Mad Dog on first take. Now, for those of you that don't know, Mike Francesca and Chris Russo, they were a dominant radio duo in New York City for decades. They were the number one sports show in the biggest media market in America. Now, I don't remember why they separated. I think it was creative or maybe personal differences, but either way, it's been more than a decade since they've been together. This entire year behind the scenes, ESPN has been working tirelessly to reunite them on first take. Chris Russo was added to the rotating panel back in the spring. He's on the show every Wednesday. ESPN pays him $10,000 for every appearance. Now remember that number. Remember that number. The Chris Russo experiment has been a success for ESPN. He brings an entirely different energy to the show. The audience seems to love him. The show on Wednesday is usually one of the highest rated shows of the week. Not to mention the fact Chris Russo represents two of ESPN's favorite woke boner words, diversity and inclusion. Well, KC, how in the hell does an old white dude represent diversity and inclusion? <laughs> it's simple when you think about it. Stephen A. Smith has turned first take into BET. Most mornings, it's a panel of black dudes with Mina Kimes coming on every once in a while to represent female victims in sports media. Throughout the week, Chris Russo, he's usually one of the only white dudes invited on the show. They damn sure ain't inviting Max Kellerman. Which, by the way, has anyone seen Max Kellerman lately? This dude is like the white Bamani Jones. Max Kellerman is on ESPN every afternoon, but he still somehow finds a way to be completely irrelevant. But anyway... When I saw the headline this morning about a potential reunion between Mike and the Mad Dog, one thought immediately crossed my mind. I read comments. Most people were excited about the potential reunion. Most were excited to see the dynamic between the radio duo and Stephen A. Smith. I had a different feeling when I saw this news. The first thought that came to my mind, could ESPN be laying the groundwork to part ways with Stephen A. Smith? KC, that is insane! Why would ESPN willingly part ways with the face of the network? You say all the time Stephen A. Smith is the franchise. ESPN pays him $12 million a year. Why would he leave? And why would ESPN want him to leave? Well, let's just look at some things that have happened over the last 12 months. Over the summer, Jimmy the Kennel went on a romantic vacation with his butt buddy, Howie Stern. During his time off, Stephen A. Smith was one of the guest hosts. To be honest with you, Stephen A. was a hell of a lot better hosting the show than Jimmy the Kennel. Critics in the mainstream media praised Stephen A. Smith for a job well done. He was asked at the time if he had any aspirations to move into late night television. Stephen A. Smith admitted, always been a dream of his to host a late night talk show. Unlike Bamani Jones, Stephen A. Smith has experienced massive success throughout his three-decade career in the media. There's just one blemish on his record. 20 years ago, ESPN gave him the opportunity to host a late-night talk show on the network. It failed. It wasn't huge, embarrassing failure status, but it was damn sure close. Last month on Woke Take, they were talking about the lack of black players involved in the World Series. The discussion centered around compensation. First round draft picks in Major League Baseball might spend two or three years making peanuts in the minor leagues before they see big money. Now, peanuts are fine if you're Don Lemon, who enjoys peanuts with his lemonade. But for a young, inner-city African-American kid, they need to make money now. 
Stephen A. Smith was attempting to make this point, but he then shifted the discussion about compensation onto himself. Watch for yourself. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and of course, I have people look at me, I'm not talking about me, even though I got news for you, I am underpaid compared to some people on television and what they get paid, but that's a subject for another day. I ain't apologizing for that to a damn soul. I am underpaid. Having said all of that, it ain't about me. When I shared this same clip a couple of months ago, a lot of you guys were pissed off that a dude making $12 million a year would have the audacity to complain that he's underpaid. But our thoughts, our opinions on this, it really doesn't matter. The fact is, Stephen A. Smith believes he's underpaid. If he were 100% happy with his situation at ESPN, there would be no need to go on live television and make these comments. When someone is complaining about being underpaid, what they're really saying is, I'm undervalued. I don't feel valued by my employer. Now, Stephen A., he subtly compared himself to other hosts on television. Sean Hannity, for example. Sean Hannity makes $25 million a year, over double what ESPN's paying Stephen A. Smith. Sean Hannity's on the air, at least on television. He's on the air one hour a day. He's sleeping in his own bed every night. Stephen A. Smith on two hours every morning. He's on Sports Center. He's on NBA pre- and post-game shows. NFL playoffs, he's on the road. NBA All-Star Game, he's on the road. The three months of the NBA playoffs, he's on the road. He covers major UFC events. The way Stephen A. is looking at this, he works a hell of a lot harder for $12 million than Sean Hannity does for $25 million. A couple of months ago, he launched a podcast that has no affiliation with ESPN. He's been making appearances on Fox News. We are starting to see Stephen A. Smith not only branch out from ESPN, but also kind of branch out from sports altogether. Now, let's look at this from ESPN's perspective. Would losing Stephen A. Smith be a massive blow to the network? Yes, of course. But hidden beneath their supposed dedication to woke boner words, ESPN is still in the business of making money. Stephen A. Smith and ESPN agreed to a five-year deal in January of 2019. Now, I'm not all that good in math, so I contacted our resident math expert, Mina Kimes, to help solve this tough equation. KC, if you add 5 to 2019, Stephen A's deal runs through December 2023. So, we are coming up on the final year of his contract. You just heard him say it. Stephen A. Smith is underpaid. Now, he's not going into negotiations with ESPN asking for less money. But I had to guess, he is going to demand a substantial increase in his salary. And he will have a point. Stephen A. Smith will have a point. Ratings for first take are up 16% since they banished Max Kellerman to the woke dungeon. Stephen A. Smith is an attention assassin. This dude possesses an ability that very, very few people have. Stephen A. Smith has the ability to command attention. Every week he has ESPN in the headlines, but there could be a small problem. Disney owns ESPN. Disney's not going bankrupt anytime soon, but they are still losing billions of dollars. Their direct-to-consumer business lost $4 billion this year. Their streaming platforms, both Disney Plus and ESPN Plus, lost $1.5 billion combined. When major corporations are losing billions of dollars, they typically don't hand out raises. Matter of fact, most of the time, they're cutting costs. What's one of the first areas they look at? high price talent. Now let's assume for a second ESPN can reunite Mike Francesca and Chris Russo. They will have a full year of pairing them with Stephen A. Smith at least once a week to condition their audience. If they were to become the permanent replacements at $10,000 an episode, their salaries combined would be less than $5 million a year. Do the math. Even if ratings dropped, let's say First Take goes from the $430,000 they're doing now to Let's say 330,000. They lose 100,000 viewers. ESPN still coming out ahead. Here's the thing. I understand why Stephen A. Smith feels undervalued, but it is incredibly difficult to command more money when your show's not drawing half a million viewers. Now, I don't have any inside information. I don't have sources at ESPN feeding me behind the scenes info. I just get this feeling that Stephen A. Smith is getting burned out at ESPN. 
That's just my perspective from the outside looking in. For years, Howard Stern would drop subtle hints that he was tired of terrestrial radio. Sometimes, he would just come out and tell his audience he wanted to leave regular radio altogether. No one believed him. When he signed with Sirius, it shocked the mainstream media, but he had been dropping hints for years. We haven't gotten the same directness from Stephen A. Smith, but he has given subtle hints. Every summer, he complains about the grind of covering the NBA playoffs. From time to time, he'll talk about the grind of hosting a two-hour live show every morning. You just heard him complain about being underpaid, undervalued. The dude's getting older. I think Stephen A. Smith looks at his personal brand as being bigger than ESPN. Or, at least it could be bigger if he wasn't being handcuffed. I often call him the world's highest paid parrot. I don't think we see the real Stephen A. Smith on ESPN. Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick left ESPN back in 2007 for a variety of reasons. One of the main reasons? He wanted to be free. Colin Cowherd echoed the same sentiments when he left several years ago. He was sick of the culture at the network. 2023 is going to be an interesting year. We could see two sides going to the negotiating table with neither negotiating with the intent of coming to an agreement. ESPN could be looking to save money. Stephen A. could be looking for freedom. I don't know. I don't know. That was just my initial thought when I saw the headlines this morning about the potential reunion of Mike Francesca and Chris Russo. Now, granted, I am always skeptical. I tend to look at the least likely outcome of any situation and figure out a way that it could become possible. It just, it just feels to me like both ESPN and Stephen A. Smith are laying the groundwork for a possible divorce. ESPN told the New York Post if Francesca and Russo proved to be successful, they would be willing to have them on first take five days every week. Not just one, all five. Now, I would assume that means no more rotating panel. But anyway, link to the channel on Rumble in the description below. Be sure to subscribe over there. But give me your thoughts. Have I lost my mind? Has the conspiracy nature of my mind completely taken over? Could Stephen A. Smith and ESPN be prepping for a divorce? Or will he remain at the network for the foreseeable future? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.